Uh, with that in mind, though, one thing I always look at, too, is like, where's that number at? You know, when it goes to PPMs of Bray or PPMs of Malik. Eh. I think we can have arguments here. But one thing I go back to is I look at university data. And then once you get above that 25, you know, 35 number PPM P1s, I think they have 85% of the time you're not going to see a response. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You know, So it's just one of those things. I mean, if you're sitting below a 20 or if you're even below a 15, heck, if you're below a 10 for sure, you're probably going to see benefits from a banned FOSS application to make that more sustainable. I don't even want to use sustainable. To make that more plant-friendly, more biologically friendly. Yeah, you get a better you, return on investment. Utilize carbon. Oh, Some absolutely. way, shape, or form with that band of phosphorus. Another place I usually see good results is on sands. If I'm in pretty sandy yes. soils, yep. I typically get a response out of my phosphorus. And if I add carbon, I can get more. And then the other thing, we've been talking all day about uh, hormones, and uh, hormones are absolutely meaningless alone. You know, it doesn't matter how much cytokinin you have. It's your ratio of these things to the other hormones. It's those five hormones collectively that are the brains of the plant, and their ratios are what's making the decision on how to respond to the environment. Now, it might not be that complicated with nutrients, but all of those nutrients that you're testing in your soil, or I'll even take it one step further into your tissue and saps, it's not always the, the, the amount, the PPM of that nutrient in the, in the plant. It's the balance of that nutrient to everything else. So when yeah. we, we hit with a, a 10340, we almost 100% of the time induce a zinc deficiency. If you're not adding it, well, you can yeah, even make if, the argument the amount of zinc that you'd have to add. Exactly. Like, which, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because so you like, have an overabundance of concentration. So yeah, if my, exactly. And if like, if my soil and my base sats are through the roof with unbalanced calcium, then it's going to be really hard to apply enough phosphorus. So that's going to affect my rates as well. Yeah. You know, if my calcium is more balanced, I can get away with much less phosphorus. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, there's no straight answer, you know? It's, well, well, and it's kind of nice. I mean, 1034, 03, 18, 18, low salts. FOSS inputs. Let's just put it that way. Um, banded FOSS inputs. I always like adding zinc just to help get that ratio yeah. closer. Now, you could probably spend yourself silly trying to make that ratio perfect. Yeah, probably. You know, but with that, you know, doing a doing a pint rate if the gallons are lower, doing a quart rate gets it closer. So when that plant takes a drink from that band, it actually has zinc to help open the doors to phosphorus yes. at the end of the day. Um so with that being said, you know, when would you want to apply most of your phosphorus if you had all the tools in the toolbox for an operation? I mean, I'm not going to underestimate in the phosphorus, you know, in most environments, cold soils, phosphorus limiting, limiting soils, I would want to apply a little bit as close to the seed as I possibly could. So that first drink that you're talking about is is at least abundant yep. in phosphorus. So when that plant wakes up and imbibes its solution, its water, it's going to sense, it, plants are very smart, seeds too, and they're going to sense the environment around it, and it's going to control its entire life now from that sense. Yeah. Uh, there's genetics. I don't want to get too crazy. The seedsman comes and he talks to you about all this different genetics, but there's machinery inside the seed that's going to transcribe and translate and turn this genetic information into a plant. And that machinery is going to respond at a certain rate. It's an epigenetic effect. Yep. So if we're germinating the best seed in the world in a poor environment, the rate at which it is transcribing is going to be much slower than if we germinate the same seedling in a highly productive environment. Yeah. So you need enough, at least early on, to trick that seed into thinking it's in a productive environment yep. to give you a chance to grow those record yields. You know, because if you just start out malnourished, I mean, you're going to be you're gonna be a scrawny adult. Well, and it goes to the point, and I don't want, I mean, I'm trying to keep it balanced here about maybe not going too far down the science rabbit hole, but still being within check and talking about stuff that needs to be talked about. You know, it's like phenotype versus genotype. Oh, yeah. Okay, they so, get mad when I use those words. Yeah. So, like, phenotype is the physical expression. Absolutely. Okay? Genotype is what's in the DNA. Okay. Um, my dad's bald. Okay. I'm balding. My phenotype is I'm bald, and also my genotype is I'm balding, okay? 
you get to the sense of, um, let's just say if I had a brother and he had a full head of hair, he doesn't, he probably still has a genetics for balding, but his phenotype or whatever he's gone through, that's those stressors may not have happened. Exactly. So he's not expressing it. Didn't turn that on. Exactly. It didn't turn it on. So you go back to having that in furrow, um, and talking about making sure that seed is turning on the phenotype that we want. Because it can have the best genetics in the world, but like you said, if it's malnourished and it doesn't feel like it's in a good position, it's not going to get, I don't want to say aggressive, but it's not just going to keep pushing forward. Absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely. I mean, that's why it's it's so important to know that sometimes year by year, the, the natural stressors that happen in an environment... Are, are messing with that phenotype and that phenotype has more to the yield than the genotype. I, I personally feel there's a lot of great genotypes out there in the world of agriculture. Oh, there yeah. is some amazing genotypes. Oh, and they're not lying. Yeah. Those genetics are <laughs> yeah. cool. But with that, <laughs> if the situation and mother nature, the, da- the hand that we're being dealt made a phenotype with those genetics, it's not the genetics fault to a point of mother nature turned the wrong keys and opened the wrong door. Absolutely. You, you get Absolutely. what I'm trying to go there. Um, but with that, if we were able to use a, a... Guys, if you like the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.